Alright guys, I have the Sony a7C. One of the problems I found with this camera is the ability to output 4K recording onto an on-camera monitor. Now I've tried Andy Cine 4K monitors, I've tried Feel World 4K monitors. Every time I've tried to connect it, for some reason it didn't work. If I switch my camera to 1080, it then started to display. I've done a bit of research online, I found out that there's very few number of monitors that can output 4K, especially for these Sony cameras because they generally have a problem with outputting 4K through HDMI. Ninja Atmos, that's one of the ones, but they are super expensive. Until I found this one. This is the Portkeys PT5. It's a five inch, very lightweight on camera monitor. It has a HDMI in and out of 4K at 30 frames per second. Super excited because this is very affordable as well. So let me go ahead and unbox this, set it up on my Sony a7 III, showcase some of the features and the specs around this monitor and see what this can do. In the box, it comes in this very military grade hard shell carry case. Has some clips on the sides to unlock it. You can see how compact this is. So that is the monitor. You have yourself the sunshade. There's a cold shoe mount that you can use to adjust different angles and viewing positions. So it can twist left and right and then up and down for whichever viewing angle on your camera you like. Underneath here, you have a very small HDMI to micro HDMI cable, a standard HDMI to HDMI cable. You have an Allen key as well. This is to adjust the size of the cold shoe mount just in case you wanted to lock it and tighten it as well so it doesn't really move too often. And then you also have a user manual just there right at the bottom. So let's take a quick closer look at the monitor itself. On the right hand side, you have the DC input there, 24 volt input, which you need to buy separately. You also have a five volt USB input. So you can actually power this with a USB cable plugged into the wall outlet. This is the on off button. On the left hand side, you have a HDMI in and a HDMI out and a headphone monitoring input. On the back, this is where you'll be able to power it wirelessly via a battery. So this supports the NPF series batteries, which are very notorious for the Sony cameras and then also an LP-E6 type battery as well. None of these are supplied, but you can buy them separately. I will be powering this using the NPF battery series. I have a two pack here, I've charged them up fully. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanted to check out the battery pack as well to complement this on-screen monitor. So let's go ahead and set this up with my camera. Okay, so if I just turn this on, before I put the monitor just there at the top, let me just show you I have this set to 4K. So the first thing I'm going to do is put myself the battery in there to power this on. There we go, clipped into place. Put this into the cold shoe mount. Tighten it. You can angle this pretty much however you like, which is very convenient. So I'll do that. HDMI into the micro HDMI port. And then we turn it on from the side. Now you saw how quickly and easily that just started to work. So I was so impressed that this works with 4K output right out of the box. No settings I needed to change and the screen is actually very, very clear. One of the reasons why is this has 500 nits of brightness. It has a wide color gamut and it has a contrast ratio of a thousand to one. The other thing I really like about this is that it also supports 3D LUTs via a USB input. So I will showcase that. I have some .cube files stored on my USB for the 3D LUT monitoring on the monitor here. But before I do that, let me just run through some of the settings on this monitor. It is a touchscreen monitor, so you simply tap it. You have some items there on the left-hand side. Here you can see some of the color temperatures, backlights, you can change it to anamorphic modes as well. And there's plenty of different adjustments that you can make. The second option, this allows you to flip the on-screen display or the actual display of the menu items. Here's some of the settings around the language and the transparency. This is the option that I will showcase with the 3D LUTs when I put the USB in. You can change the volume and then you also have some information about the firmware. If you swipe anywhere on the screen, this brings up the more advanced monitoring menu. So if you click the plus icon, these are all the different monitoring tools. 
You can see you've got options such as focus peaking, false color, image flip, histogram, color temperature, custom RGB waveforms, and many, many more. The other thing I really like is to add these as your standard options on the left hand side sidebar here. All you have to do is just tap it. So let's say, for example, I want to check the RGB waveform. It's now there on the left hand menu. I can go ahead, hit plus and select another one that I really like to see on this menu at all times. So false color could be another one of them. If I hit back, you'll see these remain there all the time. So when I go back and I can see the full screen view, if I tap, I swipe, those options for the monitoring tools will be there at all times. So as you can see, these are the zebra ones. You also have the grid to see if you're even. Here is the RGB waveform. Then you also have the false color. So this is a very great and quick and easy way to monitor your videos when you're filming. This is perfect for advanced filmographers to really get in there to get the perfect color and the grading of their footage. And you can actually turn as many on as you like at the exact same time. So there's no real limitations about that. This will give you a complete color accuracy for when you're filming. So you can be sure not to get anything incorrect. Now let's go ahead and check the 3D LUTs. So I've got them onto the USB. If I go back, go into the cube icon, turn on 3D LUTs, stored from the USB, and you can see all of them have automatically appeared right there at the bottom, which is great. So if I select one, you can see, you know, this is a very vibrant color. Change these to different cine modes. And you can pretty much store as many as you like. If you go into the USB menu, you can go into your USB and here's all of the files that I've added. So if I select, let's say Loch Ness, you double tap and it downloads it to store it on the actual monitor, which I think is great. There we go, we can go back. If you go back to stored from USB, this is the Loch Ness 3D LUT. You can see it's a very dark and it gives you that vignette, which I think is an awesome feature to have on a monitor of this size. Overall, I'm super happy with this. All I can do is just turn 3D LUT off, get back to normal and continue seeing the rest of my footage in a larger screen. So it's very easy to turn around as well if you wanted to face yourself and you're recording vlogs. There's so many different cool features to have with this. And overall, I am super impressed with this purchase. Take a look at the description below. I have the link where you can check this out on Amazon. It is around 155 pounds, but for that price and to be able to output 4K, I think is so great. It is made of plastic, so it is lightweight, but it's also portable, so you can take it very easily with you anywhere on your filming or your shoots. This is now the only on-camera monitor that I have, so I'm gonna use this for shoots that I do maybe outside of my studios and on location. I can also use this for multiple different purposes. I can set this up as an additional monitor for my phone and then have a separate monitor for my camera or vice versa, so I can see two things at the exact same time, especially when I do top-down shooting using my rig for any unboxing videos. So that's it. If you did find this useful, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up. Any questions around the PT5, drop a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I have new videos out every week, like, I have new videos out every week with tech gadgets just like this, and I'm sure you're gonna like those, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss those ones, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.